One must be clear. I judge a tree by its fruits. I've never been anti-Catholic. I know so many great people that fight the globalists that are Catholic. I have to say predominantly the largest group fighting world government, communism, anti-family activities, it's been the Catholic people. And that's why I've been criticized a lot for not coming after the Catholic leadership. But with this Pope, he is so nakedly Mao Zedong, so nakedly Fidel Castro, who's going to visit in a couple days, that I just absolutely would be a sellout if I didn't speak out against him with my full will, despite the great dangers of that, obviously. Uh, this is an anathema Pope calling for world government, calling for carbon taxes that will kill a billion people in the next 10 years. Lord Monkson's analysis shows, and I concur with it. It's truly sickening. Here's the headline, London Guardian. Pope Francis' abortion pardon, a great gift for Catholics in Boston, as if he's God. Not Christ forgiving, but the Papa. And then we see the shocking images of a drowned Syrian boy show tragic plight of refugees. Our government, five years ago, launches Al-Qaeda in Syria, kills 300,000 of these innocent people. And then when Russia and Syria fight back, we call them terrorists. And our own media says that, quote, take out Assad, that'll stop ISIS when that's a group attacking. And they show a dead little two-year-old toddler in the sand. But they won't show the tens of thousands of dead babies that I've seen online and you've seen online that were killed by Western-backed rebels in Syria. So they create the crisis and then say, look, a dead baby. Let all these people in and pay for them. Because the Pope says. That's crazy town. But that's a system targeting people that are politically uninformed of what's happening. I want to open the phones up in the next hour, early in the next hour, on any of these issues. And I haven't scratched the surface of the news yet. The toll-free number to join us is 800. Well, that's the weekday number. Excuse me. The toll-free number, because we produce everything out of house on Sunday, is 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539. And I haven't done this in about three weeks. It's first-time callers. 877-789-2539. First-time callers, your chance to get on air. International callers, country code 512-646-1776. 512-646-1776. And we'll start taking your calls at the start of the next hour. I'm going to come back and blitz through a lot of news in the next segment. But I wanted to go to break, since I mentioned it, with a Slate article. The government's secret war on small businesses, Operation Choke Point, was meant to stop fraud. Yeah, the government runs the drugs. So why is the program going after legitimate businesses? They're shutting down everything that's mom and pop. It's a vertical integration. That's what world government is. Here is the report. Operation Choke Point was a program created by the Obama administration's Financial Fraud Enforcement Task Force. The government says it's over now, but business owners across the country claim that's not true. It's a task force that most Americans probably have never heard of, but it has more control over the choices and decisions that Americans make than almost any other agency in the government. Brian Wise is the president of the U.S. Consumer Coalition, a consumer advocacy group. Choke Point was supposed to be focused on mass market consumer fraud when the program started in 2013, but it quickly morphed into something much bigger, a way for federal regulators to strong arm banks into punishing any type of business that didn't meet their approval by putting them on their list of high risk merchants. Government regulators are essentially telling banks that they need to be morality police, that these banks have to make moral decisions on who they can and cannot do business with, and they have to make moral decisions on what consumers should have access to. And what kind of businesses were on this list? The usual suspects were there, debt consolidation scams and online gambling, but also completely legitimate and legal businesses like firearm sales, coin dealers, tobacco sales, and more. In the same way that we say that racial profiling is bad, you're saying that without any due process, these industries and the merchants within these industries are guilty of some kind of wrongdoing simply because they offer a legal product to America's consumers. 
And that's just part of the report that's up on InfoWars.com. That's what the cashless society is about. In the last decade, we've seen newspapers refuse gun shop ads, sporting goods store ads if they carry guns. We've seen banks refuse, Smith & Wesson, Remington, others having bank accounts. Hitler, people compare Hitler to so many things, but I mean, Hitler really started in the mid-30s, 35, 36, denying certain political and ethnic groups the right to have bank accounts or businesses. And we've seen the IRS go after Christians, libertarians, conservative groups. This persecution is real. We've seen the New York Times admit last year that some lady, they use as an example, but there were hundreds of thousands of cases in the last decade, would like deposit $1,400, $1,000 a day from her little Mexican cafe in New York that had been around for 35 years. And she would pay taxes on the money. But they just said, because you made small deposits for decades, that's a fraud. We're taking your entire savings, less than $50,000. No judge, no jury, they just did it. And then it comes out that the major central banks, Wachovia, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, all of them, are laundering hundreds of billions of dollars of drug money a year. But see, cops don't raid the big banks. Cops bust your dumb teenage daughter when she's stupid enough to be caught with ecstasy or marijuana. And I'm not defending those drugs. It's just, you don't bust the little dumb girl or the little dumb teenager boy. You need to bust the kingpins shipping this crap in here. And then you got this pope openly pushing world government and carbon taxes that's a death sentence on the third world and pushing class warfare and pushing abortion. And American conservative, but also mainline Catholics are really freaked out. And now they're telling Europe, and I've got the headlines right here. You are going to allow anybody in we want whenever we want. And if it's a million a month or 10 million a month, you're going to house them, you're going to pay for them, or you're going to hell. I didn't join some Jim Jones cult being a Christian, and this guy wearing some hat is not my God. If he was opposing communism and abortion, I'd say he's a good guy. But his fruits are what come out of the end of a jackass. Now, continuing, here's the New York Times. Wealthy Gulf nations are criticized for tepid response to Syrian refugee nations. Qatar. Yemen. Saudi Arabia, the ones launching the attacks in North Africa and the Middle East and Syria and Libya, causing the flood of people they've run out as they kill non-radical Muslims and Christians, they then won't take a single refugee. I hear criticism of Israel all day. Fine, criticize Israel, but be honest. Does Egypt take them? Does Jordan take the Palestinians? No. And now we're supposed to take all these people and give them everything free. And then don't politically criticize their religion, though our religion can be criticized. Don't you see the setup? It's sick. Oh, but look, a little dead boy. Oh, a little dead boy. What about the hundreds of thousands you killed? Here's another one. Again, I mentioned this. Pope calls for Catholics to shelter Europe's migrants. Oh, it's our job just to shelter the giant ballooning Islamic population. Candy and cuddly toys. Migrants finish epic trek to Germany. Germany's advertising you come. Because Germany doesn't have kids. Germans have 1.3 kids. They're like, hey, we're the new caliphate. We're the new Islamic state. Come here. We're the communists. Come to Germany. You got German towns of a thousand people now that have had this week the New York Times reported 2,000 new migrants. They're told you house them in your house. But not at the Catholic Church, not at the Vatican. Refugees streaming to Germany as Pope urges Catholics to put them up and encourage more, 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 more. Just like our open borders. See, it's all happening unified worldwide. It's a globalist takeover. And it only intensifies. On the island of Lesbos, where 161,000 illegals are. The police clash with them as they demand everything free. Can you go to their country and demand something free? No, but does it matter? What we're seeing is economic warfare with refugees against the West. 
when the globalists could care less about these people and want to inject them with cancer viruses as soon as they can give them shots. They're just desperate political minions that'll follow whatever edict they're given. Second hour straight ahead. Did you tell your friends and family to tune in? Because this is history. Totalitarianism comes in many different flavors throughout history. It can come from the right wing, the left wing. It can come from religious cults. It can come from a foreign invading army. And in the modern 21st century, it's basically coming from political correctness, masquerading as the Renaissance, masquerading as liberalism. It seeks to shut down free speech. And the controlled globalist left has willing accomplices in the Republican Party and other conservative and libertarian organizations and groups throughout the world. The robber barons that control this planet are not free market. They are monopoly men who seek to have systems free of competition, controlled by offshore combines above the law. The main mission of Infowars.com and my 20 years on air is to shatter the left-right paradigm and to get the public to become aware of what's really governing and controlling society on a mass scale. Bottom line, we have reached that legendary, colossal moment in history where the next thousand years of human development, our very destiny, is being decided. That's why we're launching Operation Money Bomb 2015. The first money bomb I've done in three years, because we only do these if they're critical to be able to build up our infrastructure. And with the money we raise from this, we will be able to stay on the satellites and get on UHF, VHF, and cable stations across North America, reaching tens of millions of more people right at the time they're receptive and looking for answers. Starting September 16th, through the 17th, we're going to broadcast live from 11 a.m. on the 16th through 2 p.m. on the 17th for 27 hours with an amazing lineup of guests, investigative journalists, documentary films, and more. We are seeking to raise a million dollars so that we can reach 400 million extra people potentially in the next year. Because if you do the math, and if you look at the numbers that we're already getting from affiliates and from the internet and from YouTube and from Facebook and all the platforms, we are reaching 20 million people a week. If you put all that together over a year, that's upwards of 200 million different individuals around the world is how the algorithm metrics come out. So I simply want to double that in the next 12 months after launching this money bomb. Just the satellites, the closed captioning under federal law and other regulations will cost us right at $39,000 a month, which if you add it together is over $400,000 a year alone. When you talk about cameras, crew, studio, million dollars is only a portion of what we need to do this. But it's an important part to ensure with the collapsing economy and the hard times we're going into that we have the funds it takes to keep this beacon of truth exposing globalism and dehumanization operating so join us this september 16th and 17th for what i believe will be the final money bomb that infowars ever runs as we prepare to launch to the next and final level of global awakening because as mahatma gandhi famously said First, they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they attack you, then you win. We are in that process of being massively attacked. And in the face, we're charging up, getting ready, and going in. Go to Infowars.com forward slash money bomb for all the information. And in closing, I want to say this to all of you patriots out there across the globe that have spread the word about our operation and that have supported us. History is happening right now. The destiny of humanity is being decided right now. And InfoWars, which you, the viewers and listeners and activists, stand at the heart of, is the engine that has made all this possible. You're not standing behind the InfoWar. You are standing at the center of it. You are right beside us in this fight. And I guarantee you, 
George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Sam Adams would be incredibly proud of what you've done in defense of human freedom, in defense.